I brought my car in two weeks ago. By the time you're seeing this video, uh, probably three weeks ago. And the dealer called me back after 30 minutes and told me my Subaru WRX transmission failed. I drive a CVT Subaru WRX and that is the worst news for a CVT owner. And not only did they tell me my transmission failed, they told me it seized and they told me they would not be covering it under warranty. Even though I've done no modification to my car that would affect the transmission. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything that happened, the entire story. I'm going to tell you about the process, why they denied it, and what I had to do to fight them on it. And yes, guys, this story has a crazy ending. Be sure to stick through the video and listen to what happened. Before we get started, guys, definitely subscribe if you're interested in more Subaru or WRX content. Thanks. On January 1st, yeah, it was New Year's, I drove like 300 and 400 feet out of the, like kind of like going out of my apartment complex. And I noticed that my car was a little bit clunky. I wasn't sure what was going on. Not clunky. I noticed something was different. So I immediately turned around, parked the car, uh, went to bed. Obviously, there's nothing I can do in New Year's. Called the dealership in the morning. I was like, hey, something's feeling really weird about my transmission. Not sure what's going on. There's definitely something wrong, though. What do you recommend I do? And I was really looking for them to, you know, get. I was looking for an appointment. And the service guy just said, drive it on in. So, that's what I did. I drove it on in, and I drove about 0.8 miles, and that's how close I was to this dealer. But yes, this car was driven probably 0.85 miles between that little trip that I tried to get out of the apartment complex and when I took it to the dealer. So I dropped it off at the dealer, I kind of explained what it was like, why it was feeling weird, you know, nothing crazy, it just felt a little bit slower, maybe a little bit clunky, and uh, it just didn't feel right. And I'm, you know, obviously being a WRX CBT owner, I'm a bit scared of the CBTs, they've warranted them to 10 years, 100,000 miles, because they've had issues in the past. So then I drive to work in a different car, I get a call after 30 minutes, and that call basically is, your transmission's failed, it's seized, We've taken it on a test drive, it completely failed, and it's gonna cost you $8,000 to replace it, and we're not gonna be covering it under warranty. Obviously, as an owner, I was like, all right, I'm gonna call you back, I need a second to kind of digest what you just said. So I hung up the phone, and then I went into like freak out mode, I was like, what the heck just happened? And then I started digesting the facts. So basically, somehow, my transmission fluid had drained completely. Every once in a while, I'll go under the car, and I will test how I'll test the tightness of that transmission fluid reservoir. I may have tightened it over, over tightened it and pitched the ring on it, which caused it to drain. I'm really not sure, but no transmission fluid. Well, actually, it had four quarts low transmission fluid, so very little transmission fluid. But some transmission fluid, and the dealer did tell me that the transmission fluid was still in the transmission and some of it was in the reservoir, but it was still cycling the transmission when I drove it over. But he basically, in that, like, minute and a half conversation was like, you drove it to us with no transmission fluid, and there's no transmission fluid and we can't figure out why, we're denying the warranty claim. Because I was like, oh, you should fix it under warranty. And he was like, nope, we already processed it as a denial of warranty claim. So immediately I'm like, what the heck, I'm gonna have to escalate this to Subaru, I'm gonna have to open a warranty case, what the heck. From my perspective as an owner, I have no idea what they did with my car once I dropped it off. I dropped it off telling them that it had transmission issues, and they told me they took it for a test drive. And I told the guy, I was like, if you took it for a test drive, I can't be liable for one of your techs beating up my car when I came in and told you I had transmission issues, or I thought I did. So it was already red flags. I was like, this is totally not cool. This is not how a dealer should have reacted. Like if they took it for a test drive and it had transmission issues, if they didn't check the fluid beforehand taking that test drive, and they test drove it and the transmission seized, they are totally 100% liable. So I called the dealer back and I was like, hey man, like you really need to do this under warranty. I explained the issue. He said, no go, we're not doing it. I'll talk to my service manager, but I'm pretty sure we're not doing it. He already said deny the claim. And I was like, I'm just gonna let you know, I'm going to escalate this to a Subaru case. Long story short, they held fast with their denial of the warranty. They were firm under that the transmission needed to be replaced. Now, I hadn't thought much into it other than taking their word as like what the truth was. And I was like, well, I don't have a transmission that works. So over the next three or four days, I got in contact with Subaru of America. I opened a case against uh, against the warranty claim and against the dealer. And basically Subaru of America sent out a non-warranty service somebody. And they concluded also in those four or five days that it was not a warranty claim. And again, again, I went back to Subaru and I said, I'm gonna have to escalate this case. And that's exactly what I did. I escalated the case. And at this point, after about five days of me not having my car, my expensive assets sitting at a dealer under someone else's control, me being worried about it, 
I started looking into the components of the of the transmission, and I you know I was familiar with it, and I looked into how much fluid actually runs through the transmission, and I really started to question how did the transmission seize? Because I drove it less than a mile, they told me to bring it in, and the transmission shouldn't just seize. I didn't have any check engine lights, no warning lights, no lights whatsoever upon delivery to the dealer. I was also driving fine. It just felt a little bit weird. So I have no idea how it seized in that short period of time. Now this is where it started getting really, really sketchy. I expressed that the dealer told me, and I expressed and recorded all the conversations and emails with the dealer, and I copied them to my Subaru kind of like rep who was dealing with my case, my case manager, and they investigated on some of those claims. Now this is where it gets really sketchy. The dealer then retracted their comment that they test drove it and said that they did not test drive it. They told Subaru that they did not take it for a test drive and that they diagnosed it before even driving it. And this is where I'm like, you know, the dealer's lying, they're trying to get money out of me. The dealer's not transparent about what they're doing. They're telling me one thing, they're, and that one thing that they're telling me is not what's happening with my car. Subaru is telling me something else. What the heck's going on? I feel like I'm being robbed, all those types of things. So then I called the dealer back and I was like, confirm to me that you didn't take it for a test drive. And that's what they said. So do I believe that that actually happened? I don't know. But then I said, all right guys, if you didn't take it for a test drive, the transmission didn't seize. And I was like, how did you know they didn't seize? And this is what they told me. There was no fluid in the transmission, so it must have seized. Can you believe that they diagnosed that the transmission not only failed, but it seized somehow after they put it on a lift and noticed that there was no fluid? And they wanted to charge me $8,000, not under warranty, which is wild. I expressed all that with Subaru. And part of that case, and I'm gonna make a video on how to file a case with Subaru of America, but part of it is I escalated the case and I demanded that a regional service manager, like the guy that specializes in diagnosing this, goes out and tells me my transmission needs to be replaced. And I documented everything. I wrote about the transmission. I wrote a long email talking about the transmission, how it was designed, how it was built, that there are fail safes, right? There are sensors for heat in the transmission. There's a pressure sensor for the fluid levels. Nothing was tripped in my car. Still no check engine lights. The dealer told me there are still no lights on the car, no check engine light, no warning lights. Nothing was telling the dealer that anything was wrong with the transmission. So I spent four or five more days documenting all that information, getting that all sent to the service manager. And finally, the service manager goes out to the dealer. I don't know whether he flies out or anything. The dealer at this point is totally out of the loop. Super is taking over the case. The guy calls me back. I get information from my case manager. She says, they just want to fill the transmission fluid and see what happens. And I'm like, okay, that's easy. Let's fill the transmission fluid. That's what I think that needs to be done. They fill the transmission fluid. She calls me back. They're, he's going to take it for a test drive. He's going to make sure that it needs to be replaced, right? A day goes by, the dealer has been like super squirmy. What's crazy is this whole time, my car was there for like 12 days. They weren't returning my calls, they weren't returning my emails. I'd have to get on, I'd have to get in contact with the sales team who would then track down the man, the service guys and I, they would give them the phone. I wouldn't tell them my name, they'd pick up and that's the only way I could get in contact with them. So it was a horrific experience. But I finally get a call back the next day. It's a Saturday at this point from my case manager and shout out to the case manager for working way more than she needed to do to get me all this information, understanding that my car was gone for a long time. I didn't get a loaner, I didn't get anything. The dealer was like, I'm not giving you anything until you give us eight grand. Get a call back and they're like, your transmission is running fine and great. Your warranty's still intact, come pick up your car. So I'm sure everybody watching this video, thank you for sticking through at this point. That's the craziest thing that I myself has ever heard. Like. The fact that the dealer tried to basically take eight grand from my pocket and do all that, it's just nuts. And I mean, it's gotta, it's gotta happen. And this dealer's gotta do stuff like that to other people and people aren't smart enough to recognize that it's all BS. And I, I just think it's crazy that that happened. It was like the most stressful 10 days, a terrible start to the new year. I just, just absolutely crazy. So yeah, I feel very fortunate being in my WRX right now. The car is actually being sold for no reason of the transmission. I'm just getting a manual because I want to build a car. Warranty's still intact. I have that confirmed from Subaru. Nothing went on the record of the warranty. The transmission is driving far better than it was before. They told me that the fluid that came out of it was really, really bad. If you 
guys own a WRX CVT, get your transmission fluid replaced more often than they suggest because I guess my fluid was really, really bad and I don't drive the car very hard. Well, thanks for watching this story. If you've heard other crazy stuff like that, drop it in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys kind of following the channel and being concerned about my car when I wasn't posting a lot of videos. So I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys.